heart on fire for you for you oh lord set my life in order for you for you i want to know you lord pray i want to know your ways oh lord set my heart on fire for you are you praying We like this word millionaire. We love it. We are obsessed about it. We like that word billionaire. When they say you are a billionaire, people clap and smile. They look at you with admiration. But it has destroyed many. Billionaire, they say. Millionaire, they say. When you hear the word, there are those who when they hear this word, it's like some dopamine. It drives them crazy. Please ask the Lord to purge your heart. Any money that will take away my relationship with you, anything that will cause me to be worse than I am spiritually, may it never come around my dwelling. Never come around my dwelling. Is someone praying? Someone who loves God more than money, loves God more than business. Never come around my dwelling. The kind of money that you will not have peace in your heart, the kind of money that you will know that someone died for you to have it someone was defrauded for you to have it you told a lie you cheated someone to have it the fruits of corruption and dishonesty and falsehood hallelujah The first assignment in this season of abundance is for God to find a people he can trust, not a people he loves. He already loves you, but can he trust you? Years ago, the Lord spoke to me and he said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Believe me, this is one of the cardinal secrets of laying gold as dust. Many of you are business people and the thing is not working. You are not lazy. You are productive. But God loves you more than your business. He loves you. He does not want your heart to falter. He does not want you to degenerate spiritually. He would rather suspend the manifestation of that prosperity until you hear this sermon. There are many of you, it's not the devil stopping your promotion. I tell you, it's not Satan. You have been weighed. You were already quarter to going out of the things of God. By the time they now promote you to become an MD, God will not even see you again. Church will not see you again. You will not listen to anybody again. Nobody can tell you come again. You say me? That was my former self. You are talking to the one who was broke. That jeep parked outside belongs to me. That estate there belongs to me. And God says nonsense. You are a tenant. The earth belongs to the Lord. Do you know what made someone in the Bible to be called a rich fool? He was not the rich. The fool was that he did not understand the purpose. Why did God give you dominion over his resources? Why did God make you a captain over his inheritance? I live perpetually in this consciousness. That everything God ever places in these hands, it truly belongs to him. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a preacher. Fight greed now before it tears you into pieces. Fight selfishness now before it turns you to become someone who is not a believer. God wants your heart beyond your offering, beyond your tithe, 
beyond your profit what he's looking for right now. I hope I'm not wasting your time. God gave us a word that is a season of abundance now. The first key is not just to show you some dynamics. You are operating in a system that is not the world system. Can God tell you now to empty your account and you say, yes, sir. I'm not asking you to do it, but can you do it? If you cannot do it, go back for a retreat. But if an opportunity to buy a nice house comes, can you empty your account for it? Yes, that means that house is your God. Whatever you cannot do for God and you can do for something else, even if it's yourself, anything you can give all for is your God. You don't like what you are hearing. Listen to it all. What then is the pride? This is my business. This is my ministry. I am this and that. No. Believers don't talk like that because they understand the transactions that happen in the spirit. Don't get me wrong. There are benefits that come. There is glory in riches. There is glory in wealth. But let me tell you the truth. The believer who understands why God releases resources will know that number one, God releases resources for your comfort. Number two, the advancement of his program. Do you know, sometimes I become very ashamed and even embarrassed that believers have to be cajoled to give. It's become a very dirty subject of debate, unfortunately, even within the church space. It was supposed to be an orientation that responsible believers have that you never have to coerce and manipulate because that should even be the bedrock of your understanding before you're rising financially that I am your treasurer. Lord, as you trust me, you can be sure that a portion of your faithfulness over my life will be reflected in the advancement of your program. I, for one, I cannot imagine any notable kingdom activity happening around me and my resources will not be part of it and it's not because of what God has done today no it's been an orientation that God is doing something like this no my one naira must be represented there if it is too small you can use it to buy a bottle of water you can buy a recharge card and make a call for that program to happen for instance but there are many believers, this, this is how we are. God, drop my own portion and we collect it, another one. It's not enough. Please add more in Jesus' name. You said whatever we ask, in Jesus' name, more again, I'm not satisfied. You just keep adding when I'm, and God says, what do you take me as? But there are others who would not even be asking. They will just cry before him and say, Father, if ever you are looking for someone to advance your program, I may not be able to preach, but if you can trust me with resources, I will take care of my children, take care of everyone, and see to it that as far as it depends on me, that your program goes forward. And God says, this is the kind of person I'm looking for. I'm going to show you how these blessings come. But it's for you to know now that the major hindrance is not that your business is not working. Let me tell you the truth. Because there are many of us you've been praying, what is the missing link? Why is it that this door of finances does not open? Let me tell you, the average person in our world today is knowledgeable enough about value. And our world has become so networked that any value you have should at least bring you something. If your hand is still empty, it's not the problem is not with your transactional ability is that there is business in the spirit you have not done i'm yours jesus i'm yours forevermore i'm yours jesus i'm yours forevermore Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. Whoever you want to help, 
Lord, you can help through me. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours. I'm yours forevermore. I taught you that from a kingdom standpoint and from a financial standpoint there are four realms of living financially the least realm is called survival that is a dangerous realm you should not be there the next realm is called comfort the third realm is called luxury the final realm is called extravagance both um, struggle was the first realm again survival and extravagance is not the believer zone you should not be found there the believer is only giving liberty to shuttle between comfort and luxury and that is sufficient the moment you get to a realm of extravagance as a believer you are sinning against God because the resources don't belong to you it says glorify God with your body which is the Lord's that also includes the fruits that come out of you the believer is a steward just because you have money does not mean you waste any believer that wastes money is sinning against God because you do not know number one that he's a giver and you do not know the purpose for it it is okay for a believer to be comfortable it is okay for a believer to step into a life of luxury when God blesses you don't allow people blackmail you you can live a good life you can live a comfortable life are we together Anybody who is angry should go to God. The Bible says, does any man lack wisdom? It says, let him go to God who giveth liberally. So don't get blackmailed by all kinds of sentiments when God helps you. If you are helped by God, you are helped by God. It's as simple as that. However, however, listen, you must know that that transition from survival, comfort, luxury, and extravagance only unbelievers an antichrist system uses extravagance to attract people you understand what i'm saying yes when you are uncontrollably lavish and indisciplined in the presence of wealth there there is there is an engineering through that lifestyle that draws people to serve satan but the believer is not like that it doesn't matter how many billion God gives you. If you don't have anything to do with that money, the next thing in your mind is kingdom. There is no believer who should ever say, I have too much money, there's nothing to do with it. You have become a sinner instantly. Because there is the program of God is highly capital intensive. Highly capital intensive. Talk about souls to be won, crusades. You talk about churches to be built. You talk about God's program, equipment to be bought, my goodness. And you see, the world system will not fund God's program. Let me tell you that for, for sure. Just have that at the back of your mind. Satan will not get up and say, take and promote the name of Jesus. He will not do that. If you want to promote another name, he can say, take. But once it is the name of Jesus Christ, uh-uh. 